Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. You're welcome to today's National Science and Math Quiz Mentorship Session. The session is proudly brought to you by Tigo, Live It, Love It, Prudential Life Insurance, Always Listening, Always Understanding, Goyle, Good Energy, Accra College of Medicine, Ghana's leading private medical university. John C. Maxwell, a famous American author, said, the best way at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in one of the most exciting and competitive. Although, please help me welcome to the podium the National Science and Math Quiz celebrity, Dr. Abdul Subur Yakubu. Good morning. Thank you very much, Prime Time, for having me today. It's an honor to be invited to be part of this year's National Science and Maths Quiz Mentorship Session. This is without doubt a gathering of some of the finest brains in the country, and it's an honor to be invited to be part of you today. My name is Dr. Abdul Subur Yakubu. Uh, and 14 years ago, I was here as a contestant for my school, Bolgatanga Senior Secondary School, now Senior High School. I recall vividly how we came determined you know, to take the cap to Bolga on that occasion for the first time. But uh, unfortunately, the pre-seconds will have none of that. I did hear. I understand they'll be here tomorrow. Yes, but uh, it was a keen contest. Uh, we put up our best. We lost by a point, but we were not embarrassed. Uh, I think the organizers recognized that, and then our effort was specially recognized, even though we didn't make it to the quarterfinals. Fast forward 14 years, and then here we are. I'm back here again. Come to think of it, when I was a contestant, most of our contestants today had not started primary one. Well, time flies. <laughs> I'm sure you all make your schools proud. Uh, it's always an honor to be called upon to represent your school on occasions like this. Uh, and congratulations in advance for making it this far. So when I left here 14 years ago, I gained admission to read medicine at the KNUST School of Medical Sciences. Reading medicine and becoming a doctor had been a lifelong passion of mine. Um, I mean, I can hardly remember a time when I wanted to become anything else, but I completed after six years in 2011, and then worked, they had my housemanship training in Tamale Teaching Hospital for about two years, and then I worked as a medical officer there. Then I proceeded to specialize in internal medicine at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. I passed my membership examination at West Africa College of Physicians, and then uh, I will be pursuing a fellowship in cardiology in the coming year. So that, in a nutshell, is what I have been up to since I left here. And very soon, some of you will also be making that crucial decision that is what to study at the tertiary level. It's probably the most important decision you will make after the decision to read science itself as far as your future career is concerned. Um, this decision should not be made lightly because you may live with it for the rest of your life and certainly should not be left till the last minute. You'll get suggestions from parents and guidance as to what to do. But you see, nobody knows you better than you. Now, can you imagine yourself doing that one thing for the rest of your life and enjoying it? There's nothing quite like doing something you are passionate about and being paid for it. Talk of killing two birds with one stone. So life is short, so don't spend it running other people's races or living other people's dreams. Now, the, you see, the kind of goals you set for yourself ultimately determines the kind of effort you put into achieving those goals and those targets. Okay, so don't underestimate the importance of having specific goals and targets. Ambitious but realistic. Okay, write it down. Put it on the wall if you must. But it serves as a constant reminder for your purpose of your life. When I entered secondary school, I knew I wanted to become a doctor. So, and I knew how competitive it was. I knew what it took. I knew what the grades were. Because I discussed these things extensively with my mentor, 
who incidentally was my brother. He was in the medical school at the time. I remember him telling me, you need to get an E in that, you need to get a six in that. Well, these grades were not a common occurrence in my school. So you can imagine. Okay, but I wasn't deterred. Okay, with perseverance and keeping your eyes on that goal, I, was, I managed to excel. Now you can do the same. Okay. You want to become an engineer, do you know what the requirements are? Do you know what the requirements were for last year? Have you discussed it with somebody? Okay, we don't always get what we want, but you see, when you challenge yourself, you may surprise even you, okay? So have those goals, have those targets, and then work towards them. That certainly helped me, okay, in my, in my, in my, in my, in my field of study. Now, you need to also believe in yourself, okay? I'm sure you've heard that countless of times getting on the stage. They say small schools, big schools. You know, if the NSNQ has taught us anything at all, is that there's no such thing as a small school these days, isn't it? Yes. Um, you can make a difference wherever you find yourself. You know, past failures do not predict future performance. Similarly, your historic victories do not guarantee success in life. Okay? So believe in yourself and you will definitely make it. Okay, so I, 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 for those of you who will be interested in reading medicine, I think it's a good decision. Okay, um, you come to realize that it's a lifelong learning process event. Okay, so usually after your, okay, before being given your permanent license to practice. You will come to realize that it's uh, very demanding on yourself, on your family, on your social life, and you will find yourself making compromises in these areas. But it can be fulfilling in so many ways with the right attitude and passion, okay? Now, I personally, my interest in medicine, I think initially had a lot to do with the prestige of the profession, but as you, time goes on, you get to realize that there's no greater satisfaction than that gotten from helping, knowing that your efforts have helped to save a life or to relieve suffering. So it can be very fulfilling in so many ways. My message to you this morning is very short, okay? And nobody remembers your failures till you have stopped trying hard to succeed. Nobody remembers those. And they said that the minute success, okay, that minute of success will pay for the years of failures. So you need to continue to strive hard. Keep up that effort, that, that hard work that has brought you this far, wherever you find yourself. No, nobody is successful, you know, born successful. Nobody becomes successful just by nature. No, it requires constant hard work, which we know of. So you, by getting this far, you should have, you would have put in some effort to have gotten this far, okay? So you need to keep up that effort, and then it will pay off, continue to pay off. You know, once you achieve success, you need to maintain that success, maintain that momentum, that effort that has brought you this far. No, my, when I, most of my friends today are people that I met on this program as opponents or con other, other contestants from other schools, you know. So by all means, as you compete with each other, fraternize, make friends, because you may meet these same people, other facets of life. You, are, you, may, going to, you may get the greatest help from a most unlikely source. So it's just a competition, okay, you are sharing knowledge. I will not talk for long. I'd like to acknowledge the teachers who have, over the years, sacrificed time and effort to prepare us for programs like this. My own teachers who were here with me about a decade ago still come here year in, year out with another group of Tangabisi, giving 
knowledge and providing mentorship. And I think you are our heroes. And we couldn't, I think I speak for the rest of the contestants, if I say a big thank you, and we couldn't have done it without you. So, thank you very much. Um, best of luck in all your endeavors, best of luck in the competition. May the best team win. I look forward to seeing some of you. And thank you very much for the audience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yakubo. Now we'll take some questions. Any questions? I'm sure the presidents were here, they would have had questions. <laughs> I had a lot of tricks under my sleeve that day, but. Maybe I should ask on behalf of the pre-seconds. <laughs> so what was the feeling that the, the final score was 94-95, I think. Yes, it was. Good. So what was the feeling when you knew you were going to meet pre -sec? Back then you were three contestants. Yes. Two schools, so Presec, Borga, SHS. Uh -huh. And coming all the way from Upper East to come and meet Presec, who were then a dreaded sight. How did you feel that morning when you were going to face them? Yes. I think maybe I had an unfair advantage because that was my second time on the program. The first time I was in the second year, second year in secondary school. I came in, teachers knew that feeling. You know, you can't describe it, you know. <laughs> I know it, it, it's, it's, it's easier when you lose by 10, isn't it? When you lose by 20, you know you have lost convincingly. And when you lose by one, then you start second guessing yourself. And I remember the riddle that did the trick was, the answer was mandible maxilla, you know. I think I, I rang the bell too early and said mandible. If I waited a fraction of a second, I would have said man, Maxilla. You know, so you start second guessing yourself. And the worst part was that the other school rang the bell, but they didn't get the question right. Immediately I said mandible, I knew you had to be Maxilla, but you can't change your mind. You know, so yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was difficult. Yeah. There were those who didn't even expect us to go far, but we knew what we came for. We didn't expect to go out at that stage. So it was difficult, but I think we met a tougher side. You know, that, that one, we have to be frank, it, they, they were also a good school. Uh, you know, you come to realize that a, a strong team is always better than a strong individual. So I think they deserve the win. Thank you very much. So um, as you're asking your questions, we have some questionnaires going around for you to evaluate the mentorship session. We want to know the things you want, how the mentorship sessions have been so far, and what we can do to make it better for you. So I'll take more questions. If, if you don't ask any questions, I'll assume that you really understood everything, so we'll take comments instead. So if you have questions. Hello. Can you give us a brief summary of what you learned today? <laughs> okay, I learned that um, that no nobody remembers your failures till you have stopped working hard. Can you say that again? Nobody remembers your failures till you have stopped working hard. That's really excellent. And you can see that she took notes. How many of you took notes today? Please be like her, okay? <laughs> Any more questions or more comments? Another question. Can, can, you, can you talk about that briefly? There was a particular way you were doing the calculations on stage. I'm sure you remember. 
a particular way. I'm not too sure about having a particular way of well, what I remember was that it. after watching that contest, I saw that you were not calculating everything on paper. Yes, I mean, and most of the contestants will tell you, you can't, you can't calculate everything on paper. <laughs> you can't calculate everything on paper. You know, you have, to, it's practice. You understand? It's practice. And I, I think on, when I had the opportunity to talk to a few people, I said, you watch the tips. So as you watch the tips, once they start reading the question and they're giving certain variables, you know what they are going to ask anyway, isn't it? You know what they are going to ask. So you start, you don't wait to hear the question, then you start doing the calculation. Once they start asking the question, start giving you variables. In variable, you know what the question is likely to be. So you start calculating from there. By the time they say the question, then your answer is ready, isn't it? So I, I, I think that, 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 That certainly helped me. You see, it's, so it's practice. You need to watch the tips over and over and over again. I mean, there's a limit. The questions, they can only twist them, but they're going to be asking the same questions, around the same questions, really. Uh -huh. So if I see there's one thing that helped me, I think it was practice. You know, those who win the team are not necessarily the most intelligent people on the stage, but the people who have developed the technique. They know how to apply the knowledge. You know? So I, I think, I think that, that the video is one thing that helped me is, a, is practice. So you need to watch the tips and practice. You know, work on the speed. So I, I, I would say that, 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 that probably was what helped me. You, know, you anticipate the question before the question is asked. Now once you anticipate it before the question is asked, then you, so you say that you, you, you answer the question, you mute the question asked, and then they think that it's something special. It's nothing special because you, have, you started working on it before. Yeah. So I think you cannot, we can't overemphasize the importance of practice. Watch the tips, practice, work on your speed. You know? Yeah. I remember practice sessions, when we had the practice sessions back at secondary school, when we were watching the tips, then, uh, you know, I remember telling my, my teacher that, no, these tips have been edited. He said, no, they answered it within that time. You know? And I knew that I had my work cut out for me. So it's just, it's just a matter of practicing and working on the speed at the end of the day. No, okay, my question is, when you were talking, you said that you had a lot of tricks up your sleeves, but they didn't work out. <laughs> I think I heard you say that. Yes. I want to know more about some of the tricks that you came with so that if we are also practicing, like you are telling us, we will know what to do. Thank you. I think I was bragging when I said that. <laughs> I think I was bragging, you know. So I, as I, as I, there are no tricks. There are no tricks to, I don't know if you consider, as I already mentioned, anticipating the question, working on your speed, if that is a trick, then it's, it's, it was, I, I had that up my sleeve. And you know, it's division of labor on that. At least in my days, we had three. You know, we had three. And so, you need to complement each other. You know, sometimes. Now, two, I don't know how it works out on the stage, but you really need to complement each other. Otherwise, you get fatigued. You know, you get, you get tired. So you need to complement each other. As for the preparations, it's what I've already said. The working on the speed, you know, anticipating the question, really, you know. And you hear these questions over and over again, just said in a different way. You know. So I'm sorry if I haven't answered your question very well because I don't have special tricks. Okay. Hello, are Sorry. you done with the answer of the question? Yes, please. Very good. I wish I had more to say, but... <laughs> Doc. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Honestly, I appreciate your zeal 40 years back when you're on the stage. It's not easy to be on that stage. I have two questions. Yes, please. 40 years back, when you're third year, the quiz mistress, after giving out your answers, they will give you two or one, two or one. Were you happy about those marks? That's the first question. Then secondly, we saw that on the video between Bogatanga and Presek, 
there was some small friction between you and your colleagues. Why? Oh, okay. So the the first question about like discretionary marks to one. Well, those ones is the is the is strictly the quiz mistress's discretion, isn't it? Uh, I mean, I, we, I don't know. I mean, you you wish for higher marks, isn't it? But I'm sure she knows better. You know, she's definitely highly learned, and she had a lot of consultants. So, I mean, I really don't have much quarrels with that. I mean, at the end of the competition, so many things will be said to console you, but. The important thing is that you lost to a good school, you know. So, those small, small marks, I wish, I mean, it's always left to the discretion of people. So, I, I, really, I really don't have much to say about that. Friction between my colleagues on stage, I'm not sure I recall. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it never came, we never discussed it after that, you know. So, Maybe you might have examined the tips very well, isn't it? To have noticed it. I, in particular, didn't think I noticed. But you know, when you are on that stage and you are tensed up, you know, there are so many things that can happen, isn't it? That you didn't, you didn't, that you might not have noticed, you know. But that's what I'm saying. It's important to work as a team, okay? A strong team, when you complement each other's efforts. It's much better than a strong individual because at the end of the day, an individual will burn out, but a team would hold. Yeah, so I, I guess, thank you very much. Um, um, I want to ask this. I am sure there have been times that you've been asked the question, you had it wrong, and then you might have gone down. So, so my many question times. is, yeah, so many times. How do you bounce back? Because what I have realized is that most of the contestants now, when they start getting down, they go down and they're not able to bounce back. So how were you able to bounce back from which we can learn? Thank you. I think that's a very important observation. And the, and the, and the, and the contestants must take, must take note of that. You know, till the last bell is rung, you know, the contest is not over. You understand? So once you get one wrong, get another wrong, don't, don't be, don't, 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 don't let that. I mean, if you, that's what if you have watched these tips, you realize that contests have been won on true or false. No, there, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot. So don't, don't, don't let, don't let. And I'm sure your very last experience here, you, you have noticed that, you know, till the last bell goes, you can't tell who the winner is. You know, so I think you should you shouldn't you shouldn't let minor minor. You no, know, once the question is gone, it's gone. You can't do anything about it. You know, and the disapp don't don't be look don't look back on the stage. You look at disappointed faces. I mean, I never saw anybody on this just until I came down. So once you're up there, you are up there with your colleagues. You know, I mean, I could hardly hear the cheers anyway. You know, you can you you not you're concentrating. You know. Once you start looking at disappointed faces, and then it, you, 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 get, you get demoralized yourself, and then, you know, whilst you are thinking back at the uh, previous question, while they are asking a new question. So till the last bell goes, it's not, it's not over. You see, and when you win, when the last bell goes and you win, nobody remembers those things again. It's when you lose that you start saying that if this had happened, if this had happened, if this had happened. You understand? Once you win, you don't remember any of those things. So please, till the last bell goes, you know, the contest is not over. So I think that's a very important observation. And I think focus you and your colleague on stage. You know, if there are cheers, fine. If there's, mm, then you ignore that. And then focus on the next question. You know, it's not over till the last bell goes. Yeah, so I suspect that point was to, for the contestants, really. I'm sure he was making a point to the contestants, so please take, take note of that. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll take the final question. So if there's any more question or comment. Thank you. 
Sir, good morning. Good morning. Uh, please, we, are, we now have two contestants on stage, and they are supposed to work together. In a lot of cases, a question comes, and one of the contestants might not know anything about the question, but the other does. In this case, should the one that knows now be giving tips to the other, or the other should relax and leave the one that knows to the so that I will do his calculations and deliver his answers. Because in some cases, when the one that does not know is just sitting there idle, it seems like he's not doing anything there. And it discourages him because everybody's looking at them. So what should he do in that situation? So what you're asking is, if one person knows it, should he discuss it to the other before he answers? It's not time to teach on stage. Oh. There's no time to teach on stage at all. If you have been working together, if you have been working together, you will know, you know each other, you know. If you are confident about it, put up your hand, and I don't, I don't know how it is now, but you have no time to teach anybody on stage, you know. And you have to be honest and know that you don't know. You understand? And let the other person go ahead. I mean, those days, we had three on stage. And the one in the middle, there was always a reason why there was somebody in the middle, isn't it? So when you observe very well, there's somebody in the middle who was doing the coordination and then, you know, especially when it comes to ringing of the bell. That particular, that, that one has always been, you understand. So uh, that one came, you know, when there are riddles and then usually one in the middle has his hands, usually the others have confidence that there's a reason why they put him there, so they have confidence in that person. But when you don't know, be honest and know that you don't know. You don't have time to discuss. I mean, if you want to whisper an answer and then, fine, but, you know, once there, there's, I'm sure the early stages, there's no limit to the number of questions. It's time bound, isn't it? It's time bound. Once it's time bound, please answer the question. Okay? I, I don't, in my experience, it hasn't been useful to start discussing. No, you don't have time for that. And if you have been working with each other for long, I mean, it happens naturally. You don't really you understand. Uh -huh. Sometimes the confidence with which the other person has goes up. I mean, you know that he has his confidence. He knows the answer. If you're not sure, also be honest enough to let you know that I'm going to answer this question, but I'm not sure. You understand? Uh -huh. That issue came with the riddles, but for the other ones, really, I don't think you should. You, you, you don't have time. Then again, I'm sure every team, every team has peculiar lesson, isn't it? The way they prepare you. So I'm sure your master teacher would have told you something before, you know. Yeah, so I, I, I hope I've answered it to some extent. Yes. You know, that's why you have to work as a team, know each other, how, 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 how. To, but it, uh, my experience hasn't been that lesson to be, listen. Uh, when you have something like true or false, those ones, it's either or. You don't have time to be saying things. So you, you discuss and let one person, you can even make it one person's responsibility to answer that. So if you have it, you discuss with that person. One person for those ones, uh -huh. bell, true or false. But for the others, I don't think you have time to give a lecture. What's your last I hope I've answered it to some extent. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one more question for you. So there's one more question for okay. our speaker. Um, based on your, your participation here and yes. other contests that you've watched, who are your three contestants that you remember the most, the ones that you'll never forget? The, their performance has really left a print on your mind. You mean the history of the NSMQ? Yes. Apart from myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I think, I mean, the, 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 that was that one, that one. Mm, uh, Azore, uh, Aubrey, you know, that team was a very strong team, Azore, Aubrey, you know, and then I remember the way Prof Professor Mariam Adi pronounces Bubine. Yeah, she, she had a way of pronouncing it, you know, and the answers were flowing, isn't it? Yes. Um, 
those names definitely stick. You know? Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot more. A lot more, especially I've, I've been following this contest in the last few days, and then I see that there are a lot of extremely good. The unfortunate thing is that now the format of your contest doesn't allow you to score very high marks. So to know that my 94, 95 will stay. Okay, the, the format of the contest doesn't allow you to score, but I'm sure your sisters is probably equivalent to our 90s those days, because now you have three on stage. Yeah, but I'll keep an eye on you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Yakubu. Thank you. We can. He was you 14 years ago. So as you go forward in life, you need to aspire to be greater. And some things you can take from his speech today is when you challenge yourself, you may surprise yourself. Past failures do not predict future performance, so believe in yourself. And like the student from Ghana National College reminded us, nobody remembers your failures till you stop striving hard to succeed. The, um, the mentorship session is proudly brought to you by Tigo, Goyle, Prudential Life Insurance, and Accra College of Medicine. My name is Kezia Jordan, I was your moderator for today. Thank you very much.